Welcome to uh, another episode of Disruptive Voices of the Pacific. Today I'm joined by a great young man, Samson. He is, actually lives here in Australia, but originates from India. Is that right, Samson? Yes, absolutely. I come from India, but now live in Australia. Okay. So, yeah, that's, it's great to have you with us today. Now, this podcast, um, and if you're new listening today, welcome to you as well. But this podcast is the Disruptive Voices of the Pacific because we, we share a lot of stories, uh, disrupting silence, the culture of silence, the culture of shame. Um, and you'll hear stories of abuse, stories from sex workers, stories from perpetrators. Um, we've heard it all. We talk about different topics. But today I'm excited because we're actually talking about a solution. And there are some great solutions out there, particularly when it comes to keeping women safe. Um, and unfortunately, it's, it's a shame that we've got to do that, but this is the day and age in which we live. And um, Samson and his brother have come up with a solution, and I just wanted to share it with you today. So welcome again, Samson, and maybe just tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Yeah, thank you, Leticia. So uh, I came to Australia in 2008 to do my master's in international business. And after finishing that, I worked in a couple of companies. And uh, 2016, my brother and I, we co-founded a tech company uh, to serve technology clients all around the world. And uh, we have a, a very good team in uh, India, Chennai, India, and in Australia. So um, it was at this time that, uh, uh, you know, we felt that we can use technology as a force for good. So we, I have always been passionate about technology and how we can use it as a force for good. Yeah, no, that's brilliant. So you have developed a I Am Safe app. Maybe I'll let you tell us a little bit about it and why did you start that? Yeah, yeah. So uh, 2020, when COVID uh, hit the world, and we were all aware and lockdown happens all around the world. Um, at that time, uh, one statistics really stood out that I saw in the news. And that was in the first 11 days of lockdown, 92,000 child abuse case was registered. And that was a big shock to me because uh, if the registered case was 92,000, the unregistered and the unknown case would probably be 10 nights. So in my mind, I thought, that that's close to a million case in 11, 11 months. And at that point, something sparked in us to say, we need to bring a technology solution to address it. Um, there are a lot of uh, development programs and education programs happening and it's needed. Uh, but technology, the advantage always is scalability. Uh, at, at a short span, you can scale it up to a large audience. So we felt uh, we need to address this issue of women and child safety from a technology point of view and that's how the journey began yeah so let me just repeat that you said almost close to a million women were abused or uh, victims of domestic violence was this just yeah, uh, women and children so women and children yes and uh, was this just in india or was it worldwide uh, so this was only in India. This statistics was only in India because at that time I was in India. I was about to move to Australia, but we had booked our tickets, but there was lockdown. So I continued staying in India for a couple more years. Um, mm. And it was at that time I, I saw the statistics and that was the wake up call for us. Yes. And right here in Australia, the statistics were huge. But they're, they're not as big as India because of the population, um, but they were big. They, they grew in Fiji, across the Pacific, everywhere, um, unfortunately. And so maybe just then, yeah, so it was really out of um, a crisis where the vision was born, which where a lot of creativity does seem to come forward out of crisis, and you were just using your gifts and abilities and technology. Uh, and so then tell us how you developed this I Am Safe app. Yeah, so the, the the first thing we did was uh, we just called a core team of our tech company and we said, guys, this is what we feel in our heart we have to do. Can we do a bit more research about it? Can we try to understand the problem a bit more so that we can give the exact solution that, that is viable that can address the issue? And we were horrified uh, by, uh, by the outcome of the research where we found the abuse and uh, the trauma and the domestic violence against women were much, much more, more than what we thought or much, the issue was much more deeper than that. 
and we suddenly were seeing a big issue staring in our face and we could not walk away from it and at that point we felt okay it is going to be a big battle but we are going to uh, address this issue and solve this issue and make safety a safe person a safe for, uh, safe thing for women so how we started the journey was from a tech point of view we started uh, uh, brainstorming what we call like a, a mvp like a minimum viable product uh, we had a lot of we interviewed a lot of women we had surveys we we, we sat with experts women experts who were dealing in this area of uh, domestic violence and abuse against women and asked their feedback we asked their inputs and their guidance as to what is the most needed thing for a woman um and then we collected all the information and then we thought okay we can't do everything at once but we can do it in phases so uh, right now we have completed the phase 1 of the app which uh, yeah uh, so we are doing it in different phases uh, to develop this app yep that's great so uh, phase 1 is up and running i've downloaded uh, the yeah. app so tell us a little bit about the features that are on that app and what um how it can actually help a woman Look yeah <laughs> yeah so the the core uh, engine of the i am safe app is what we call the trusted contacts so when a woman is in danger the first person she would prefer or like to have come to help her is surprisingly not the police it's actually the trusted contact by trusted contact what do i mean is it could be her spouse her, her father her a brother her sister or her colleague someone that she trusts so how the app is designed is when a user registers with the app they first add their trusted contact it could be five people 10 people they pre add them into the app then during a time of emergency when they press the sos the app sends the alert to all the trusted contacts it basically sends the live location um it time stamps uh, what what exact time uh, is at that time and then it, the phone anonymously takes a photo and a 30 second audio at regular intervals and uh, the phone stores all this data on a unhackable database what we call like a a, a blockchain technology and uh, this gives a protection security to women but also gets her the help that she needs when she is in an emergency yeah now that's brilliant so for instance you know a woman leaves the pub and um she finds herself being followed by some guys she maybe met there or whatever but you know and suddenly she begins to panic and realize i'm being followed and and quite often in, when you're in that instance you don't always have the ability to get your phone get the app so you got a bit of a bluetooth device along with that mm-hmm. yeah so we have uh, developed a bluetooth device currently it's only for android users but down the line we will bring it for iphone users as well so what this bluetooth does is it's the size of your car keychain it's that small and you can just long press the bluetooth uh, keychain or bluetooth tag what we call it and the, and it automatically alerts your phone without you even having to touch it and then it sends the alert and live location to all your trusted contacts who can come to help so we are basically bringing safety at a touch of a button and a woman can carry it with them wherever they go and feel safe and protected and where do you get this bluetooth device uh, yeah yeah cu- currently you can uh, 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 go to our website uh, uh, www.imsafe.app um but it will be shipped in december because uh, we are just working with the vendors and all the getting all the structures done and um, ship it all together by christmas so we want people to pre order it as a gift for their loved ones during christmas and then we just want to ship it during christmas what a great gift um uh, So we'll put the link to that website along with the link with the app um on here um and so it's not just for um you know if someone's following you but you might be at home and you're living with an abuser yourself um and quite often you know um we we know we're being abused but the police need evidence and I've heard it several times this week actually women who've gone to the police and the police are like we can't do anything without evidence <laughs> um and you know interviewed a Fijian lawyer Tanya Wakanika a few weeks uh, months ago on this podcast and she just said please gather your evidence is just so helpful when we want to prosecute perpetrators so again this is something you can just 
casually press record if if you know um, you know something's escalating and and what happens then. Yeah, so um, in a domestic violence situation, it's a it's a little bit of a different scenario to an emergency situation. So a woman pressing an SOS during an emergency is a little completely different to domestic violence, which happens over a period of time or uh, or or uh, the, there's control or uh, violence over a gradual period of time. So we have this feature called a uh, record. Uh, so what happens there is when a woman just presses that uh, anonymous record button, the app actually geotags the location. So it basically identifies where you are and then it timestamps it and with, with date and time. And then uh, it uh, records a 30 second audio and takes a, a photo at regular intervals. So now the only thing it, the app does not do when a woman presses record is it doesn't send alert to anyone. So why is this important is, um, as I mentioned, domestic violence happens over a period of time. So let's assume over 30 days, a woman is pressing that record uh, and it's geotagging the same house or the same location where she's residing over a period of time. Then you have like a precedence or a, or a, 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 a like a complete set of uh, information to say that this can be used as a proof or in the court of law to protect the woman to say, I, I was under a, a domestic violence, not just once. It wasn't random, but it was over a period of time. Yeah. And just from my work across the Pacific, this is really helpful because unfortunately, family members, even though they might have been present in the house because, you know, a lot of people live closely, no one wants to, you know, um, give evidence against another family member, not no one, but it's it's hard to get family to stand up against family. Um, so actually having this, you know, video and, and sound bites is huge, isn't it? Yes, um, absolutely. So, yeah. I mean, this this uh, app has only, you've only released it in the last four months and that's why Bluetooth and things are still coming yeah. forward. Have you heard much feedback from, because at the moment 5,000 people have downloaded it. Yeah. Yeah, it's more than 5,000. Uh, probably there's close to 6,000 people are at the stage uh, using the app. Uh, probably there's more more than 6,000 downloads, but around 6,000 are using the app. Um, yeah, so we constantly get feedbacks from the user and we keep improving the app. Um, so one of the feature we brought in after a feedback was this feature called fake call. So it's basically like a woman is, let's say, in a pub and she, or, uh, you know, having a blind date or if she's in a Ca uh, cab and then there's a driver who's being creepy and you just want to feel protected or escape the situation you can press that fake call button and in 5 to 10 seconds you get a fake call that co that comes in and um, you can just say oh excuse me I'm getting a call and you can get out of that uncomfortable situation so th that purely came out of feedback from the users so we felt well, that was very good because it's the users telling this feature will help us and they are being benefited from that. And yeah, I need to activate that because it come in handy uh, a lot when people uh, are talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear what you said. We get to get out of a few yeah. things, can't we? Um, yeah. That's great. Um, I want to get yeah, the other app you're still working on is one for organisations and workplaces. Um, that's not quite yet done, but tell us about that one. Yeah, so we have the uh, phase one finished with the uh, workplace app. We call it the I'm Safe Organization app. So it's for any organization. It could be uh, companies that, that, that they can use for the employees. It could be universities who can onboard their students. So basically what we have done is we have attached a harassment redressal tool to the safety tool so that uh, a workplace in a workplace a staff when she feels physical sexual emotional abuse she can raise a complaint to her management or a hr or the uh, the, the safety advisor of a school or counselor or anybody and they can get help and then we have attached a safety feature there when that uh, our staff presses an SOS during emergency, one of the alert will go to the HR who can come in time of need and uh, support them. So it's basically uh, trying to promote uh, safety in the workplace. Uh, in India, specifically, we are adding a more comprehensive uh, uh, features to the platform with this legislation called Prevention of Sexual Harassment, POSH, POSH. So in India, it's we've got a hundred million women work uh, workforce, 
and we want to address this issue of safety uh, at at the workplace so we have uh, comprehensive um, features for the posh module which will help the indian uh, workplace in a big way yeah I think this is really important because quite often a woman might find that she's been sexually harassed by a guy and it might be um, might even be a boss, um, but she doesn't report again because she's afraid of losing her job. But if she can anonymously report this through the app to the HR person, obviously the company set it up and they're wanting to receive these reports. Uh, and maybe you might find out that seven other women have reported the same man too. So I think the company would certainly look into that seriously um, and do what needs to be done. So it's kind of, yes, helping weed out a lot of this out of our work. Yeah, absolutely. And it's very interesting because uh, in a lot of uh, initial feedback, we realized that a lot of management don't like the anonymously report feature uh, because they feel it's, it just puts them at risk where they'll just be handling and battling all of these issues. And also, interesting enough, in the posh legislation from the government of India, they exclusively uh, uh, ask the women to specify names. So who, the, the 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 person who's filing the case has to mention who she is, and oh, you know it has to be very clear and brought above board so that they can deal with the issue. So our app addresses all of that. It gives the way for the uh, the committee, the external internal committee, to process the complaint and uh, bring mediation and also bring a conclusion and uh, restoration to the issue. Yeah, wonderful. So you've really um, been pushing most of this in India where a lot of your contacts are. What's the response been at an organisational level? Are they taking this on? Yeah, so uh, honestly, this is not only for India. Um, each country is different. Uh, India has posh, so it has a unique set of things. So we are having big progress in India. Equally, we are seeing a big progress in Australia as well. Uh, lately, the, the current government is very heavy on... Um, uh, making safety an uh, uh, important issue for women uh, with a lot of laws that are being uh, uh, enforced here. So workplace safety in Australia is a big thing. I am in discussions with a lot of uh, big companies and uh, women safety organizations in Australia who have seen a demo of the app and they are very impressed. And uh, we are in discussions to see how we can roll it out for uh, workplace safety in Australia as well. Yes, we are yet to explore the US market and European market and all of that. But but right now what we are doing is we are focusing mainly on uh, just few countries. And then once when we get a solid uh, footing there, then we want to scale it up to more, uh, more com countries and the workplaces. Yeah, great. Well, hopefully we can... Um... Get it into the Pacific as well. Um, yes, absolutely, absolutely, um, and and this this one of the feature that I'm really um, uh, looking forward to down the lane. Uh, which we have in our pipeline is this feature called I am safe angels. So what it, what it is, is, is every, we, are, we want to identify and uh, vet or pre uh, select couple of uh, men and women who will be like a volunteers or we call them angels who will be willing to come and help in a time of need when someone in their locality presses the SOS. So uh, imagine like I am in Adelaide right now. Uh, imagine in Adelaide, we've got 50 I'm safe angels, for example, and someone is pressing an SOS for help. A woman is asking for help. Yes, it will go to her trusted contact, but one alert will also come to an angel which is close by because her app will sort of locate who is the nearby angel to her and come to rescue immediately so it will be a volunteer led movement it will be a woman led movement uh, for women safety and uh, you know as humans we like that fact where we know we are there for each other and uh, to know that every city you go uh, that you, you have i am safe angels will make you feel uh, stress free when you travel like you know you could be in australia but when you travel to a different country sometimes your trusted contacts are back home but imagine you have a, a, a IMS of angels in that city. So that's the big vision we have. Uh, we want it to be a movement and a volunteer-driven movement. And, yeah, we are getting there. Yeah. Yeah, well well done. Uh, I, uh, big, I love that you've seen a problem and come up with a solution. Uh, and we work it out as we go. But um, the app, I Am Safe, is very downloadable right now. So we're going to put the link with this and uh, encourage women to grab it, um, begin to use it. I was just thinking I've got a 
friend who carries pepper spray around with her in her bag, which is lovely, but I thought um, uh, being able to press the button and have friends identify where you are instantly and um, be able to come to your rescue maybe as well as the pepper spray. But, um, yeah, we, we, we need to alert people. Yeah, and absolutely. It's around. Um, perpetrators will be less likely yes. to be mice as well. Um, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And and there's, there's a lot more uh, features that we have in Pipeline. Uh, at this stage, uh, the Bluetooth tag is a big one. As you said, you can carry it along uh, in your keychain, and um, you, can, you you can always feel safe. So, so safety is actually uh, you know it's a mindset. You need to know that you you are not worried because in 2023, even right now, uh, even in safe countries, uh, women feel unsafe walking after 10 p.m. Like you know, there is this subtle fear of okay, I'm walking alone. Uh, will I be safe? But we want to break that. Uh, mindset and of course it's a holistic approach but we are taking a technological angle to it uh, and trying to solve the best we can uh, with this thing. Yeah. yeah brilliant well thank you Samson our time is up but I appreciate you just having this chat um, it's exciting and we hope that we can um, just put another tool into particularly women's hands to um, as you said help them feel safe so yeah. thank you yeah. all the best we'll keep up to date thank you thank you very much Easily